Hello, everybody. Um, yeah, I watched more or less four games today, but none of them complete. Well, one I almost completely watched, and um, the others a little bit here and there. Um, my, as you can see, I'm wearing Liverpool. Uh, that was the big game that I actually uh, today that I actually what did not intend on watching, and then. I actually saw a lot more than I thought I would. Um, let's go chronologically because I think I went through almost all the leagues in a way. Uh, except Germany. Um, I don't see Germany live. I haven't seen any highlights yet. I saw the Dortmund one and I saw the Bayern one yesterday. So um, I want to, you know, focus on the games now. We can talk about the situation in the leagues maybe tomorrow, a little bit or Monday morning as well. I also have to say I have shot all the Asian Cup jersey review videos. So yeah, we'll uh, look at these very soon. And yeah, let's see what has been going on today uh, all over Europe. Um, I started actually watching uh, Roma Torino, which is a nice game uh, between two teams with a lot of tradition. And kind of the plan was, I knew that um, the two games that I really wanted to see were Real Madrid, Sevilla, and were Arsenal against Chelsea. And yeah, it started off. I said, okay, Roma starts at three. Let's hope that the game is decided at halftime or close-ish two, and then we go to the big, bigger games. And it pretty much went the way uh, that, that, that way. Um, Roma took an early lead, which basic, with basically the first chance, it was a free kick that didn't go out of the touchline, was kept in play. Zaniolo takes a shot which was blocked, is now in the sit is sitting there and still manages to wrap around and put the ball in into the goal. It was actually a really nicely taken goal. Um, 15 minutes later, El Sharavi, who came on for Unda, ran to goal, taken down by Sirigu, goalkeeper. It's uh, in the color of Mexi Tunnel for Roma, and I was actually quite happy. And I said, okay, uh, halftime fits are nicely now. Uh, let's go over, let's see Anfield a little bit. Maybe Liverpool scores an early goal. They didn't. And I think after 10 minutes or so, I then said, okay, now it's time for Sevilla against Real Madrid. Or the other way around. Real Madrid Sevilla, where I have to say, uh, I didn't like the jersey matchup. And it kind of it's weird, but that actually prevented me from really enjoying uh, the game a lot because it was white against black with the gray shoulders of Sevilla. I hate those jerseys. Uh, if Sevilla would play in red, I think it would make a whole lot more sense. But then, yeah, what jersey is Courtois going to wear? It's not that goalkeepers have no, cho uh, no choice. Uh, the game started off, I think Real Madrid really for the first 20 minutes was really, really good and had chances and most notably through Vinicius but uh, for all the great play that Vinicius provides lately uh, the one thing he does not provide is goals and so the one chance uh, was missed and but in the 20th uh, counter-attack of Sevilla should have made it 1-0 um, did not happen either and then I had the feeling, yeah, this was it was an open game, but it was not an exciting game. And I kind of checked the scores. I saw Liverpool 0-0 still. Um, Roma suddenly was 2-2. I said, oh, I'm missing here something. I hope they make the 3-2. But I still stuck with the uh, uh, Real Madrid Sevilla. You know, I made myself... I usually, when I'm invested in a game, um, you know, when I put some time in, I usually will stay with the game unless something else is happening. And so I stayed with the Real Madrid game uh, right up until half time. And shortly before that, I said, okay, let's check, because it was a 15 minutes difference. I checked the scores again. I saw Roma had 1 3 2. And I can tell you the highlights uh, that I saw Rincon and um, Saldi made two wonderful long range shot goals for Torino uh, in the 51st and 67th. Fortunately, Sharavi made it uh, 3 2. Uh, from the comments, I could uh, deduced that Roma was just trying to keep it 2-0, not invest anything, and that uh, didn't pay dividends, and then they played series again. They could have made it uh, not only 3-2, but maybe 4-2, but also Belotti missed a huge chance uh, towards the end of the game, so it could have been 3-3. Uh, big points for Roma, for sure. 
Uh, this was a duel of two teams that were, I think, before the game level on points. Let's see. Um, Roma, now we're not level on points, but um, Roma was three points ahead. But Roma now moves for now in fourth spot. Lazio and Milan have the chance over the next two days to take over, but Roma for now moves in fourth spot. So that's a big win for them. Uh, so that takes care of that game. Next game was um, I went to Anfield and saw Liverpool is down 1-0 and I said, oh no, Crystal Palace. I, I realized that the Crystal Palace uh, was the team that actually beat City at the Etihad and I couldn't believe, I, I thought Liverpool should get something. Uh, it's this tricky phase now for Liverpool. They've lost uh, against City there. You know, it's a little bit of a finding phase. And Crystal Palace was probably the worst team at this point. But I st from the start of the first half, uh, second half, um, Virgil van Dijk shot, deflected, Mo Salah kind of gets that this might be something and he pokes it into net 1-1 one, one in the 46th minute um, and that I said okay let's see I saw there's some energy going um, the goal by Crystal Palace by the way was a really nice contract the first shot on goal but was nicely really really nicely played nice goal uh, by them uh, let's pull the game up I think it was Townsend was the uh, scorer of that goal Yep, Townsend in the 34th minute. Salah in the 46th, in the, and then Firmino made it just five minutes later. Uh, Firmino, oh, 53rd, felt like five minutes later. Uh, made it 2-1, and was also a deflected shot uh, that kind of curled in. But at that point, I thought, nah, the goalkeeper was maybe not lucky in either of these goals. But that's what a good team this, uh, does. It gets goals from out of nowhere and turns the game around. And at that point, it really seemed like Liverpool can take uh, Crystal Palace apart. And I switched over to the Sevilla game when there was just a little bit of a corner series. No, not all the corners. There was a little bit of attack going for um, uh, Crystal Palace. But then, again, Sevilla, Real Madrid. And a second half, what I could tell, it was all Real Madrid, Real Madrid, Real Madrid. Uh, there was not, more, not much coming from Sevilla. I, they were just trying to hold on. Uh, and then I looked again on, on my phone and it's 2-2. Switched back the channel. Um, rebound even to see the goal by uh, Tompkins. They showed him ahead of the corner that he's going to make the goal and he made the goal uh, straight from a corner. I think it was the first, if not the second corner of Crystal Palace and Liverpool doesn't give up goals after that ball City situations that much. So yeah, uh, that was remarkable and it was the second shot on goal for Crystal Palace. And by that time I'd seen, of the four goals, I'd seen two live, two for Liverpool and um, oh, not none of the Crystal Palace's goals. I still went back to Real Sevilla, but I saw that the game is not as exciting. I could feel that they, I need to watch the other game, and yes, I did. I then said, okay, let's uh, see what Liverpool will do. This, this could be a exciting game. If they turn this around, I really have a feeling that um, this could give them a boost, um, a morale boost to move forward. And sure enough, it came uh, cross in... I think by Henderson and the goalkeeper basically puts in his own net. I think they uh, Salah touches it, but it would have crossed the goal line anyway. For me, it's an own goal. It has been for now awarded to Salah. But I think, yeah, those uh, it's one of the goals that he, it's all the goalkeeper. I mean, he tries to save it and, and pushes it like that in the end, in, in his own net. Uh, horrible. I still say it's an own goal. And yeah, three two, and it got very tight because Crystal Palace was still dangerous, but also uh, Liverpool. I had always a feeling Liverpool is more going forward, is the, is clearly a stronger team, but uh, they cannot quite seal the deal. And then Milner gets sent off um, to really stupid yellow cards, and the second one, if he pulls away, he doesn't get a yellow potentially. Um, that was a well deserved um, yellow red. Yeah, he's the only one for Liverpool who got a yellow card, 82nd or 89th. 89th. Uh, 
two really stupid fouls at the midline. No need for this, honestly. Uh, so 10 guys from Liverpool, five minutes added on time. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. Uh, Mane and Salah had a free on the goal, but kind of mismanaged it a little bit. Uh, Sané, Mane, I'm kidding, Sané and Mane. Mane uh, missed that one, but he made then um, the 4-2 uh, right in the 93rd minute. At which point I was relieved because I knew this is the game. And I switched over. And as I switched over, um, Casemiro takes a shot. <laughs> it was really, I switched over and I see, see Ka -ka -ka Casemiro taking a shot that goes right in the corner. Uh, in the corner. Uh, yes, it was um, touched by Havlicek, I guess his name. Uh, but 1 0 for Real Madrid. And from what I, I, I could tell, I mean, it was switching back, back, but it was always Real Madrid. It was a very passive. And the commentator said, yeah, they finally uh, broke through. There was not much coming from Sevilla. Modric in injury time made it 2 0, by the way, playing with a little band aid here. He uh, hit the head uh, with another Sevilla player. So that was 2 0. I'm gonna say we had some dinner, uh, brief dinner, and I'm checking the results and see 4 3 Liverpool, Crystal Palace. I managed to see four goals for Liverpool, three for Crystal, and uh, three for Crystal Palace. I didn't see Maya made another goal. This team, you cannot, I mean, the game was done, but you cannot beat this team to death. It's really, um, not was really surprising to me, but then, yeah, I could watch pretty much all of Arsenal Chelsea but all the excitement the Real Madrid game was not exciting the Roma game was exciting but I chose not to watch it the Liverpool game was really really exciting there was another game between Wolves and Leicester I haven't seen the highlights so I won't talk about it now uh, it's also ended 4-3 so many goals in England I think there are quite some nice results there Arsenal Chelsea it was a weird game as that Chelsea had a lot of possession but Arsenal was very efficient and didn't give Chelsea the chances. Um, don't want to say a defensive clinic, but very smartly played by Arsenal. Like I said, gets the early goal, helps, always helps uh, by free kick. I think it was a free kick that was then played through uh, and he just in the short corner, uh, you know, near corner, puts it in, actually quite interestingly taken, but very well taken. Makes it 1-0, and then from another free kick from almost the same, Simbuzin Kosciani uh, scores after he's totally free, uh, scores with his shoulder. I mean, it looked like it's a sneaky header, but scores with his shoulder. Uh, there was a, I think it was Marcos, I'm not... Marcos Alonso. I'm not sure if it was my wife, I thought it was him who hit then the post in the um, stoppage time of the first half. That could have um, made the game, but other than that, Chelsea didn't get into it. I always had the feeling it is more likely that Ars also makes a third. They got home with an easy victory. Speaking of posts um, in the late in the first half, this also happened that Roma where Torino could have made it 2 1 just before. Half time. So that was my watching day today. Very glad I watched then the second half of the Liverpool game uh, almost completely. You know, all, only a few switches. That was an exciting game. And yes, I didn't see all the Crystal Palace goals, but at least I saw four Liverpool goals. And I was actually thinking, as soon as I switch, Crystal Palace is gonna score. That's exactly what happened. So yeah, wearing my new Liverpool shirt, I'm really hoping that Liverpool will win this championship. They would so much deserve it. Oh yeah, quick interruption of the video from post-production. I realized that, um, well, I mentioned the situation for Roma on the table. I think I should at least talk about uh, what it means, the other three games that I watched, uh, what implications on the table they have. Uh, obviously, Liverpool will stay ahead of Manchester City. At the moment, they have, again, seven points um, difference, but Manchester City has to play tomorrow, so uh, will be four. So, they basically stay on pace and put a little bit of pressure on Manchester City. Uh, the Arsenal-Chelsea game has a whole lot more implications because already United won as well. Um, 
which means, let me just pull up uh, the standings here, they are United and Arsenal are level on points, I think they have 44 points, uh, and they move now within three points of Chelsea, and that's exactly the reason why Chelsea wants to have ego in, they need a goal scorer, because today you could see that Chelsea, they probably have the better um, style of play, but they don't have any oomph going forward. They need a striker who will pull away goals. I think that's what Chelsea is missing sorely. So uh, that's the stakes that are now and um, the race for fourth spot uh, in England is about as exciting as it is potentially Italy. Although there are only three teams in Italy there at the moment, a lot, whole lot more teams. Tottenham can also um, have 48 points, but with a game uh, in hand so they can also pull away but you know Tottenham Kane is out Son is away it's gonna be interesting uh, to see how they will do and now for Spain um, there is also the situation is that Sevilla had has at the moment a really dip in the form uh, they beat in Copa del Rey Athletic Bilbao but since then it's all you know already at home to Atleti it was not a great game it was um, a draw now Bilbao losing twice in the league again in the cup now losing to Real Madrid um, they were right there with Barcelona not too long ago and at the moment they are now fourth place Real Madrid uh, goes into third uh, so it's Real Madrid uh, 36 and Sevilla 33 also Atletico Madrid uh, won today afterwards at 41 points a little bit pressure on Barcelona uh, who will play tomorrow in the evening against Leganes um, again anything but the Barcelona will, will win would be a big surprise so that's my quick interjection that I wanted to get to because I think this is important to talk about those things as well I'll make a bigger roundup of all the leagues uh, potentially tomorrow or a little bit on Monday um, yeah depending in Italy you and Milan are playing on Monday because of the Supercoppa so maybe I'll keep my Italy for a little bit later but yeah Back to the video. Let me know which games you watched today. I know there are still some games on at the moment, but um, I decided to make this video when I go to bed. And I'll give you an update tomorrow on all the other games. Tomorrow, I think, will be for me an Italy day and maybe watch Barcelona a little bit. Also, we'll give you an update on the Bundesliga. Uh, so let me know what you watched, What if you watched any of the games that I watched, if you agree with my observations. Otherwise, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that might be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will give you all the updates on my channel, all things my soccer universe. And with that, I want to wish you a wonderful day.